Hey there, everyone. Welcome back to our channel. Today, we're going to dive into some important information that's buzzing around the beautiful city of Vernon and the Okanagan, and that is the speculation and vacancy tax. Yep, we're going to break down what this means for homes in Vernon and why it's getting a lot of attention lately. And we are starting now. I'm Lisa Salt with Remax Vernon Salt Valor. More taxes, you say? No comment, I say. I will, however, give you the details on the speculation and vacancy tax. First off, let's tackle the basics. This speculation and vacancy tax, or the spec tax for short, it's a tax based on the assessed value of your home. It's all about how you use your property and your residency status. I think we all know that the tax was designed to discourage housing speculation. The government doesn't want people leaving homes vacant because we have a housing crisis. Now, if the home is your principal residence, or if the home is rented for six months of the year or more, you shouldn't have to pay any spec tax. Now, currently 59 communities already have the tax. Kelowna, one of them. And now, new just for us in the North Okanagan for 2024, areas within the municipal boundaries of Vernon, Coldstream, and Lake Country are included. Also, other areas of BC affected are, well, Vernon, Coldstream. There's Peachland, Penticton, Summerland, Salmon Arm, Kamloops. And then outside of the Thompson Okanagan, there's also on the island, Courtney Comox, Cumberland, Parksville, and Qualicum Beach. Now I should point out that tax areas are the municipal boundaries of Vernon, Coldstream and Lake Country. Somewhere like Silver Star and anywhere in the North Okanagan Regional District is excluded. So say Armstrong, Lumbee, Enderby, Falkland, all excluded. So where does the money go, you ask? Well, the theory is it goes into funding affordable housing projects. It's a part of the bigger picture to ensure everyone has a place to call home in our wonderful communities. That's what we're told anyways. Okay, so how much is it? If you're a Canadian citizen or a permanent resident paying the majority of your taxes in Canada, the tax rate is 0.5% of your assessed value each tax year. Now, if you're a foreign owner or you don't, for whatever reason, pay most of your taxes in Canada, the rate bumps to 2%. Plus, foreign owners, you may also be subject to the underused housing tax, which we're not even going to talk about here at this point, but just to be aware. All right, here's the nitty gritty. Declarations must be made by March 31st, with payments due by the first business day in July. Same as your property taxes here in Vernon. You'll receive a speculation and vacancy tax letter, and you can easily declare online at gov.bc.ca slash spec tax. The declaration requires information about your property, whether it's rented, whether it's your primary principal residence. Now remember, because circumstances may change, it's essential to declare each year. And then they use your social insurance number and your address and date of birth and all these this sort of thing to confirm your residency. They can confirm that with the tax assessment office. It's super important to declare each year because it does help determine your exemptions, your tax rates, and maybe even credits that you might be eligible for. So think of your declaration as like your property status report for the year. And like I say, BC Assessment is going to play a crucial role because they're going to provide the data to ensure accurate taxation based on those property ownership and values. Oh, and by the way, a quick heads up, the tax isn't the same as Vancouver's empty homes tax or the Government of Canada's underused housing tax. Different rules, different game. Also, before we continue, please ensure that you subscribe to our channel and like this video as we're posting new videos like this every single week. On this channel, we give you the straight goods on Vernon and the whole North Okanagan, our ultimate Four Seasons Paradise. Whether you're moving in nine days or 90 days or just curious about the area we call home or maybe some of the taxes around the area we call home, be sure to call, text or email and just add salt. All right, let's talk exemptions. If you're like me, that's what you want to know. How do I get out of paying this tax? First of all, if it's your principal residence and you declare it that way and you can prove that it is, then that's no problem. If you rent it out for six months or more in a calendar year, I think it's a calendar year, a year anyways, then you're fine. Other exemptions, if you own property jointly with someone else, then there's different exemptions that may apply to each owner. 
For example, say a parent co-owns a home with their adult child. The child lives in the property while the parent lives elsewhere. In this case, exemptions like the principal residence for the child and tenancy exemptions for the parents may very well apply. There's also disability exemption. So if a person with a disability lives in the property as their primary residence, or even if they're living with you, you might be eligible for an exemption. And maybe you're living apart from your spouse for work or medical reasons. That could also make you eligible for exemptions on additional homes. There are exemptions for lots of situations actually, like previous principal residence, separation, divorce, or even if you've recently inherited the property, there's all these different exemptions. So if that applies to you, you should definitely check to see if you qualify. Properties with licensed child daycares, properties inaccessible by road, certain excluded categories like government owned properties, no surprise there, or those owned by regional districts may qualify for exemptions, of course. Remember, now if you think you can qualify for an exemption or if you have questions about your eligibility, definitely get in touch with the relevant authorities for guidance, clarification, that sort of thing. I am going to put the link below. I'm sure they will do their best to have the fewest exemptions possible. So check if you think you fall under one of those categories. A frequently asked question we hear, I've lived here for my entire life. I don't own any other properties. Why do I have to declare every year? Why? Because the government said so. You might move, who knows? Your status may change. You might move out of the country. Unfortunately, you have to declare every single year. One thing that's important to know from a buyer's perspective is that the assessments are not attached to the property. Now, if you're worried about that when you go to buy or sell, the answer is no, you don't have to worry about that. The debt is incurred by the seller. So let's say a homeowner is assessed the tax. It is then the individual homeowner who's responsible for paying it. As a buyer, you shouldn't need to worry about that unless the seller has been assessed, hasn't paid, and then there's a lien that went on the title. So that lien would have to be cleared before the buyer can take ownership of the property. Whew, so that was a whirlwind of info, but it's all essential stuff. I hope you learned something today. Remember, staying informed helps us all navigate these changes as smoothly as possible. Thanks for tuning in, and until next time, happy housing, everybody.